Hey YouTube, I'm Avedis Shamitro and I'll be demystifying while well, explaining the drift alignment method. Well, this method of polar alignment allows you to get the most accurate alignment on the celestial pole and it is required if you want to do long exposures, deep sky astrophotography to your telescope. Now, the declination drift method requires that you monitor the drift of selected stars. The drift of each star tells you how far uh, away the polar axis is pointing from the true celestial pole and in what direction. Now, all true declination drift is a simple and straightforward method, but it, requ it, requ it requires a great uh, deal of time and patience to complete it when first attempt. Now, to perform the declination drift method, you need to choose two bright stars. One should be at the near uh, eastern horizon and one due south near the meridian. And both uh, sh stars should uh, be near the celestial equator, so wh where you will have a zero declination. Now, let us consider that this is your nose, this is your nose celestial pole and uh, basically if you are striking a star uh, the star will rotate in the counterclockwise direction so it is equivalent as looking the stars in the eyepiece and rotating the eyepiece in the clockwise direction now let us consider uh, an ideal case where your polar axis is pointing at the north celestial pole exactly at the north celestial pole so basically when you look at your eyepiece, there is no drift of the blue line, which is the star. So the star is not drifting in the eyepiece, which is perfect. Now let us consider that your polar axis is pointing in the far east. Now in order to correct this, the best thing you can do is to look at a thousand star uh, passing by the meridian and to fix by applying the drift method which I'll be showing you now right now so basically I will look for a southern star and this is where my polar axis is pointing so basically in time you will see that the star is drifted to the south now if this if I are looking to a southern star and the star is drifted to, in the south of your eyepiece so the polar axis is too far east, which is true. So basically you refix your polar wedge and you'll take it to the west in order to have a perfect or an accurate polar alignment. And as you can see, there's no star drift again. Now if, you, now if my polar axis is uh, too high, so basically here, if I want to fix this, error I should look for an eastern horizon star so I will apply this method and I will look for an eastern star and I will wait for a drift to happen as you can see the blue line is drifted to the north now if you are looking at an eastern star and the blue and the star is drifted to the north that means your polar axis is too high which is true so basically I lower my polar wedge as you can see, we have a perfect polar alignment. There's no drift. Now, when your polar axis was in the far east, you might ask me why did I chose a southern star to correct this error instead of choosing an eastern star and waiting for drift to happen in order to correct this error. Now, the answer is uh, simple if you can imagine a couple of circles so basically this is the star uh, track and this is your telescope track this is the north celestial pole and this is your polar uh, axis where your polar axis is pointing so when it is when your polar axis is uh, in the far east what we've made, we've looked to a south, uh, southern star that is passing by the meridian, or close to the meridian. As you can see, in time, 
the distance between those two circles is uh, drastically increasing which is great so we can notice the drift in no time now what if you've looked instead to a, an eastern horizon star would the, the drift uh, be noticeable or uh, enough to in order to correct it so this is the case this is your north celestial pole this is where your polar axis is pointing as you can see if you are looking for an eastern star the drift is not noticeable you should wait like i don't know maybe six hours seven hours in order to notice a drift now depending on the location on the declination of your telescope but basically you now can see the difference why we've chosen a southern star instead of an eastern horizon star now when your telescope was too high we chose an eastern horizon star in order to correct this uh, pointing error now the question is why I didn't choose a southern star like I did for the other uh, error which was on the X component so this is the reason this is your north celestial pole this is your uh, polar axis where, where your polar axis, axis is pointing when you check to an eastern star you can see that the drift is very noticeable and the distance between those two circles is increasing which represent the drift now what if I've chosen a southern star would that drift will be noticeable and the answer is no this is the north celestial pole this is where your polar axis is pointing so basically you should wait uh, like uh, too long in order to see that drift happening in your eyepiece so the best thing you can do is to follow the method and this is it now let's say your polar axis is somewhere in the in, in between so basically somewhere here so we will apply the method you will start let's start let's say to fix the x component uh, the declination first of all so we will look uh, to an eastern star in order to fix that so i will wait until i see a drift as you can see the blue line is drifted to the north so basically if you are looking to an eastern star and your uh, and the star is drifted uh, to the north that means your uh, polar axis is too high which is true so basically i will lower my polar axis somewhere here and i will repeat the same experiment as you can see in time but it is less noticeable the blue line is drifted to the north although we have the right uh, declination but it's okay follow the trust the data and continue so basically you should lower it even even more and why, why this is happening because you have another drift in the x, x axis so basically this error will induce another error to the declination this is why we are, we are experiencing this but uh, be patient because at the end it will sooner or later converge to the pole, celestial pole now let us try again if I look to the eastern star and now the drift is less noticeable so basically basically the declination is uh, successful for now now I want to fix the X component drift I want to fix it or correct it so I will look for a north uh, for a thousand thousand star that is passing by the meridian so basically this is it and as you can see the star is drifted to the south so if you are looking to a southern star and the star is drifted to the south that means your polar axis is far to the east which is true it is far to the east so basically I will fix my polar wedge and take it a little bit to the west and I will start the experiment again 
as you can see in time it is still going to the south that means you should take it even more to the west although it, the, the location the previous location was the best but follow this method it's okay now fix again restart your uh, exper your method your experiment if you want it's like an iteration, uh, iteration that will converge to the uh, north celestial pole so basically I will look to an eastern horizon star and it is drifted to the south it is drifted to the south that means your polar axis is too low I will put it higher now I will repeat again it is still going to the south that means it is still lower I will put it a little bit higher now the drift is less noticeable now repeat to the north I will check the stars to the north uh, sorry to the south horizon uh, south uh, I will check a south southern star that is passing by the meridian so basically it is the star is drifted to the north so that means your uh, polar axis is far to the west so I will take it a little bit to the east and try again it is still drifting to the north and that means I should take it a little bit farther to the east so basically the drift is less noticeable as you can see look where, where I've reached so if you make another iter uh, iteration or another trial this will converge at the end at the uh, north celestial pole as I said it takes some time, it, uh, a great deal of time and patience in order to have a very, very accurate and precise polar alignment. Depending how precise you, you want it, uh, you should spend more time on your polar alignment. And that's depending on the case, on the accuracy that you are seeking details and accuracy takes time really I hope that those couple of circles uh, clarified uh, you how the drift alignment method is working uh, 